G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy here with you again. We're going to do something a little bit different this week. We're going to do a, um, a panoramic sort of uh, landscape scene with a view into a valley and a nice little um, tree up on a hill. So, so as always, with Learn to Paint TV, we're going to keep our palette fairly limited. We're going to use our three primaries, which is our French Ultramarine Blue, Permanent Lizard Crimson, and our Yellow Ochre with some Titanium White. And then we'll add in some cadmium yellow light and some viridian or phthalo green uh, just to uh, complement the mix. And in terms of the brushes, uh, as you probably know if you follow us here at Learn to Paint TV, I've got you know a large brush. I use a, a few of them just so I don't have to clean in between color mixes, and then a medium brush. And then we might use a bit of palette knife and so on as we go. So we're going to keep it really simple. So as I said, I'm going to make this composition up. I'm going to put a, a nice tree on a hill here and we'll run this hillside through to there. Then we'll have a valley, a view into the valley and a range of mountains behind that. Um, just a basic little landscape, but a lot to learn in terms of how do you structure a landscape and how do you get your values right and understand aerial perspective. And as always, we're going to use the more method of painting. Three steps, three colors, three brushes. So let's get underway with step one. Okay, step one, we're going to just mix up our dark. So I'll just take some of our ultramarine blue, some of our alizarin crimson, get a bit of a dark happening there, and a little touch of that yellow ochre, don't need much of that there. I'm just going to rough in a very simple composition, don't want this to be too complex um, at all, so use plenty of water in there. Okay, so it's nice and runny, even if you're using acrylics, you want to keep that paint fairly loose and runny at this stage. And what I want is a little hillside that's going to run in sort of through here. Maybe it'll sort of come in a little bit like that. So I've got a little bit of a, a dip there. And then I'm going to have a valley there with some fields and so on in the background. And then we'll have beyond that, we'll just have a mountain range, um, something like that. Keep it fairly simple. Maybe we'll do a little peak there. And we'll run that one down there like so. So a very simple composition. Oh, and we'll pop in some trees. I'll run the trees up to the top there of the, um, and we'll run it to there. And we have a shadow falling there. Okay. And we'll pop in another tree just below that uh, horizon line or that hill line there. Another couple in there. This is a fairly simple little composition that we're creating. And the reason why we're doing something simple is just to, um, oh, we can't see that. There's just take a pellet away there so you can see the tree here, right? Um, a little bit of shadow underneath it. I want to keep it fairly simple, this composition. And really it's about just understanding how to put together a very basic little landscape in place, right? And we'll do maybe some fluffy clouds up in here. Um, so in step two, I'm going to take a big brush. This one here. Okay, I'm going to mix up this dark, um, a bit more of that dark. And always remember when you're doing your blocking to keep that paint super thin. Lots of water in it if you're using acrylics or water mixable oils. Um, if you're using regular oils, then you want to keep... Uh, plenty of thinner in it, whichever thinner you're using. Okay, so I've got that basic tone in there. I'm going to add in some yellow ochre. The yellow ochre will push it even closer to a black. So a darker dark than a purpley dark. Okay, and let's get some more water. And, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect, this blocking. We just have to come here and just start getting colour down into these big shapes that we've just put in and we just talked about a moment ago, right? So the important thing is the outline, the shape around the edges here. Let me just um, come here like that so you can see as I block in here, right? Um, that, it's really this outline edges and getting this to feel like a tree is what's most important. So don't be trying to color in. See how I'm just scrubbing the brush around and that's creating all these 
uh, little clumpy bits of tree there, right? So I'm just working my way around the outside. And then when I've got that outside done, I can just come in here and block in the rest. Now, it's so important to keep this paint thin and not too thick at this early stage. Okay. Nice, rich, dark, and run that down by way of a shadow underneath that tree. Okay, very good. So now we've got these little trees in here. Now normally I would try and shift the tone, push them back a little bit, you know, um, a little bit lighter in value. However, for the sake of simplicity, let's just run with basically the same tone because we can adjust them with the um, highlights and mid-tones a bit later on. So I'll just mass in a bit of a dark shape for them. Don't make them all the same. So I'll make that one just slightly taller there. But if they're all the same shape, they're not going to look right, are they? Run that one into there. Okay. For the foreground here, I'm just going to mix up an earthy orange tone. Like so. Okay, we'll get a little bit of that dark into it, but not much. Now this, we want this to be really thin, this paint. This is just really more of a stain that we're putting down here. Um, but the reason why we're using an orangey tone is to complement the green for one thing. So we put some green grasses in here, then it's going to um, harmonize with that being a complement, right? It's also though, it's a warm tone. And what we know from aerial perspective and achieving aerial perspective in our paintings the warm colors come forward. Okay. So that's what we want in the foreground. We want that foreground there to come forward. Just blow those, blow that into the shadow there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you know, part of the reason why I'm just doing this without a reference today, so I think it's a good practice to just make up compositions play around give that brush a little bit of a clean and now what I can do is come in here and we'll just add white into this okay that's obviously too much we'll just gray that back a bit so it's a combination of that dark shadow tone and the warmth of the field we get this nice mauve color now this could work or it could not but i'll put it down and if it doesn't work it's kind of gone to a gray tone but that's okay if it doesn't work we just paint over it later on okay but it's definitely it's a lighter value than everything in the foreground hill here so it should give us a feeling of depth and we'll be painting highlights and things over it. I might just raise it up just slightly along there. Okay, so we get that in. That's, this is really the shadow tone that we're going to see under the, you know, the color of the field, the highlights and so on. But it's going to give us a nice sense of the atmosphere through there, isn't it? Okay, so that's what we're looking like at this stage. So that just leaves us now our mountain range through here and our sky up into here as well. Um, already this is drying off in here. There's still some thicker parts, but uh, the, you know, the working order and process we go through is important because by the time I come up here into the sky, this will be largely dried off, which will help us immensely, right? Um, so we're looking good. So next step is I'll take another brush to do my, my lights, my lighter tones, okay? Take this one here, come down to the palette here. Okay, so we've got this larger one here. 
and I'm going to take a big chunk of this white, like so. I'm going to get some blue, and mix those two together. And this is going to be our distant. I'll just take it, I'll just nick a little bit of that in, it'll just grey it slightly. Okay, which is important because we don't want that blue to be too straight out of the tube kind of feel blue. It does need to be slightly darker though. They're not going to, we're not going to see a lot of detail in them. Okay. They're going to be fairly flat edged and so on. Certainly not going to see any individual trees in mountains this far away. so far. We're going to do a little bit of a peak there, won't we? Just a little bit of a one. And blur that edge along the bottom. Okay. Don't want a hard, well, we don't want hard edges anywhere to do with these mountains. At the bottom of them or at the top. Like so. Okay. So we're going to work our way up from the bottom of the sky higher up on the sky. Okay, a little bit of water. Now, I'll, because I'm now getting into the lower part of the sky here, I'm going to thicken the paint up a little bit because I'm probably not going to paint over this sky here. So I'm using slightly thicker paint, a little bit less water. A little bit of water just to make sure that the brush moves, the paint moves rather with the brush. But I still want to keep this paint just a little bit thicker. Probably hear the rain outside. I've certainly been getting plenty of that after our droughts and bushfires. Okay, so good. So you can see how it's fairly closely related the sky tone, the lower part of the sky tone to the hills there. Well, it's you know, exactly the same colours, just a slightly different mix of them. Okay, and now that I've got that bottom part in there, I can now start to be a little bit more gregarious with my brush strokes. And then finally, we'll come in with our highlights, and again, we can reshape the edges of things with that. Okay, so now I'll go for a darker blue. Okay. Just gently around the edges of the trees there. This will be my darkest part of the sky up in this corner. It keeps that whole area there as a big sh massive dark. So we've got like an L shape composition of dark tones here. Okay, so you can see I've got a couple of different bands of the sky in. What I'll do now is with a dry clean brush, I'll give that a bit of clean. So I'm going to come in here and where I've got the different tones here, I'm just going to just very lightly just start to blend them together. Okay, so we end up a little bit of an atmospheric sky by the looks.
Okay folks, well there you go, that's the end of step two, our uh, blocking, and as you can see it's going pretty well. Um, we've got our values set up, we've got our darkest darks, we've got our warm foreground, mauvey sort of grey in the field, and we've got our little row of mountains there, and our sky, so we've got this painting nicely set up. What we need to do now is just let this dry off a bit, the water will dry out, the paint will start to get a bit tacky, and then we can come back with step three. Now if you're using acrylics, you also want to make sure you dry it, let it dry out completely at this stage. Um, so that you can then come back and work over it once it's fully dry. So we'll take a quick break and I'll see you after the break for step three of the more method of painting. Cheers. Okay folks, welcome back. We're now going to do step number three, which is where we're going to start to bring this painting to life. We're going to do our details, our highlights and our finishing touches. And uh, this painting won't need a lot to really bring it together. The most important areas are going to be getting this tree and these little uh, small trees here, getting some definition and shape into those. Obviously our foreground, grasses and so on, and then a little bit of work into this distance. And that's pretty much all it needs, although we might pop a few clouds and things in there as well, um, just for a bit of interest sake. So let's get underway with step three of the more method of painting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to tackle is getting a bit of uh, middle value into this main tree here. So uh, that middle value then will enable us to uh, get that established and ready for our highlights on that. So let's come down to the palette and we'll work out a middle value kind of tone. It's going to be mostly blue and yellow. So there's our blue. I haven't got much of this yellow ochre left and I've run out so I'll have to improvise. But um, I'll scrape up as much of that as I can. So this wants to be a fairly strong sort of tone. A little touch of the red but not much. And I'll get just a touch of this cadmium yellow light into that mix as well. And that is I use the palette knife for that because I'm trying to keep that pile of paint there fairly fresh. Okay, so now we're going to go in with some slightly thicker paint. A little bit less water now, or thinner um, if you've been using it. We uh, We don't want thin paint now, we want thicker paint to, to start to build up this tree. Now I'm indicating the light coming from over here, so therefore I'm going to start just to build up some clusters of foliage in here. Okay, just be careful when you clip out into that sky of course, because um, that lighter value will lighten off this mid-tone. So just be aware of that and then come back and load the brush. And I don't want to lose all the dark that I've already established in there either. Um, so keep some of that in. Remember what I'm painting in here now is really the middle value. Okay. And as I come down towards the base there, I'm just going to work up a darker tone. Just to keep that base nice and dark in there. So I'm going to bring it down here. And, and I want to try and leave some of that orangey earth tone here to work its way through as well. So obviously if this is the you know the green that we're using here then we don't want to use that same green in the distance there so we need to make adjustments to our strength of our green Flick of a 
few bits of grass up over the shadows there. Just run that up along that part so we're just getting that sort of separation there. Now, if you're not comfortable using a knife, you can just do this with the brush, there's no, no big deal. In fact, I'll switch to the brush just to show you. Let's just um, continue on what we're doing here. We'll just get that mix slightly darker and then we can just pop that in there it's a good idea to make sure that that underpainting is uh, well and truly dry though especially if you're using acrylics take the brush and just soften out some of this as well if it gets a bit too chunky depends on what's you know how textured of a look you you prefer make it often a personal choice really now let's just get a little bit darker again a bit more blue and red corners a little bit place them in the shadow get yellow light up here touch of the light into it now because I've got all this there's quite a bit of wet paint in here now so I can't afford to overwork my brush marks I do, it's all just going to merge in together and create a bit of a muddy mess and nobody's got time for that. <laughs> Let us just test. I'll take a clean brush, a tiny little touch of water, I made a mix here. Let's just test to see whether this is going to work or not. And that looks Around about right. So let's just use it to um, just get in some fields here. Just keep shifting the tone of it a little bit, a little bit bluer as we come down. So this is just all farmland, fields off in the distance. Okay, so to break up that field, we need to get basically a darker version of that uh, tone that is that purple tone, right? So we utilize some of this blue here. Get some of that red in there. Get a little touch of yellow. And we just want a tone that's going to be darker. When we put it down. Test this. So it's not dark enough because it's not standing out against that mountain there. I just want to utilize this to um, run in a row of trees and so on. So 
You make up a mix and then you go and test. And immediately we can see that that value was not dark enough. So then we add more pigment and we go back and we can have another try. You can see there now we've got tone it's not too dark so it's not coming forward too much probably if anything it's a little bit too light still so I'll have more blue and red okay now you watch when I add this one up here see that look how much darker that is so a few of those trees along the paddock there. Yeah, the key here is don't overcomplicate it, isn't it? It's just keep it really simple. Simple seems to always work out best, especially when you're starting out learning to paint. So now we've got a little bit of detail in our background without really detailing up much at all, really, have we? It's just a few little marks. Okay. Something like that. When I pop this on, you should be able to see it, but it, you don't want it to be coming forward too much, right? Like so. Now what this is, is the highlights on the side of the mountain. Don't ever do this. This is not something that requires a great deal of detail or even paint for that matter. It's just to break up the mass of those mountains there and to show that there's that there is some light catching on the side of the mountains. good opportunity to blur out that top line too rather than having it to um, just mix it out there and I'll just scrape up some of it there now I am fairly light down the bottom here so in terms of my clouds I probably have to just pop them in around about there so they can be seen and I'm just going to squiggle them around a little bit I'm not going to try and paint clouds as such I just want to get a lighter value that looks kind of fluffy and sits nicely in the sky there. And some of it through like so. Cadmium yellow here. Pop that there. Get a little touch of the red into it. We'll get some of this viridian or phthalo green, either one. Oop, that's fairly strong, isn't it? A little bit of red. It's too much red, so I'm going to have to mix up a chunky pile of paint here. Okay, so I'll just light up that brush, and then we're going to come over to here. And not everywhere, but where it's going to be catching that light.
start to add a bit of those highlights in there. Mix up the tone a little. Don't want it all to be one tone, so. So we don't want to overly detail up trunks and things like that. We do need to have some indication of what's going on there. Post here and there. They just give a little bit of human dimension to a die. Got to keep the cows in. Um, just grey that back a bit. We'll blue it back a bit, like so. And then we can probably come in here and indicate. Bit of a homestead about there. And there's one back here. Just a couple of little marks. Actually, I'm thinking it may be good. Dark. into some blue a little and then got to use a really delicate touch here a little bit of smoke coming out slightly bluer tone and maybe just pick out one of these okay folks well I think we'll leave it there um, I'm reasonably happy with it where it sits at the moment for a demonstration painting nice little cottage on the hill looking down into the valley and uh, pretty simple painting, pretty easy one to do. And again, I have to stress, I just made this up as we went. Um, you know, there was no reference material for this one. Just goes to show how easy it is for you just to come up with your own landscape scenes and practice them, right? And the more you practice them, the better you're going to get at doing them. So have a go at this one. I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, make sure you check out every episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address on the screen here and in the description below. And if you haven't done so already, please drop by our website, register for our free course where we give you a complete painting demonstration and, um, and an explanation of the more method of painting in more detail. So again, the web address for that is at the Learn to Paint Academy on the screen and in the description below. Come by and check us out and uh, take up our free course.
uh, to learn more about the more method of painting hope you've enjoyed this week see you next week on learn to paint tv cheers for now